hey humans uh it has been about a week i um am getting over the c word i don't like to say it out loud because people get all tense about it but i'm getting over the c word but i wanted to muster up the energy to talk to y'all about um the things that have transpired, we got a preseason game. We had a whole game that I have watched about five times. I'm exhausted, I'm exhausted. Um, and everyone's giving their opinions about what they liked. I want to give my opinions about what I liked and what I'm looking for in the Chargers practice in response to what we saw in the preseason game. So uh, welcome to the party. Deron Bland. He very quickly let us know, hey, I know I've been under the radar a little bit in practice. I definitely heard some reports about him, but um, he was like, oh, okay, y'all give me all these snaps. Here's my time to shine. <laughs> and he showed um, one of the things that really stu stood out to me was his willingness to tackle. Uh, this gentleman was in the box. I mean, he was... <laughs> He was flying around everywhere. He showed his ability to be instinctive and coverage. And um, I don't know, like, I don't know if his size is something that made him fall in the draft, but he has immediately uh, came in and made that, I guess, four spot very interesting because I mean, I think he has special teams ability. I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if he could be a gunner and also be, you know, the fourth, fifth corner on this roster. I also like some of the things I saw from Nation Wright. He has his build, you can tell, is a real thing. The time that he put in to get bigger and to put on some size, it's it's you can see it on the field. He's not getting blown off the line of a line of scrimmage in the bump and run. He's putting his hands on guys. Um there's an aggressiveness to him and even how Kelvin Joseph plays. Now you know, some people would argue there's some discipline issues there and stuff like that. Overall, watching that game over and over and over again, obviously there were the few times that Nation got beat. I think that was a product of the pass rush not being as great. You know, when Neville and those guys come out, you see that you know, those quarterbacks have a little bit more time. And honestly, the, the, some of the, the old dude was fleecing it. Like, he was... <laughs> Some of those, some of those throws were on uh, on the dime. So, um, and he was in good position. So I overall really am very ecstatic from what I saw from Nation Wright and his year two improvement. His mom has been very vocal on um, a lot of the spaces about his work he's been putting in and seeing his improvement herself. So it's nice to see it resonate on the field just from year year one to year two. Now Kelvin Joseph is in a different spot. Because if you looked at both of their play, I would say that this, I would say that Nation out of the two had the better showing um, as far as where were you then and where are you now and could we field you? And I don't know, it's, it's, it's annoying because I feel like Kelvin Joseph is, is sticky and you see that he has the athleticism. He honestly, if, if, if he locked in and really seriously tapped into that next level ability, he could be locked down. But we don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. Like there's competition in this room and we can't keep all these gentlemen. So I'm going to really keep an eye on who gets more snaps between him and Kelvin Joseph in practice. If they do, because I'm pretty sure a lot of the starters are gonna be playing. So maybe I'll be looking for that this weekend. But yeah. That is a semi battle because Deron Bland has come into that room and made it a little awkward, you know. Before I go any further, I totally forgot to mention this and I meant to preface, preface my um, video with the fact that, yo, keep in mind, the preseason is an acclimation period. That's what it is. It is to get the gentlemen that have never played in an NFL level game, acclimated to the speed of the game, acclimated to how it feels, how it sounds. You know, it's there's a lot of factors that go into it. And it's also reacclimating 
even veterans to the feel of just the game and getting in that mental space. Um, so with that being said, there were a lot of second and third stringers on the field um, for this preseason game. And although I do understand the argument of that is there, that's still an extension of the core of your team, your coaches, your everything, when you're talking about the penalties. I wanna see my starters. I wanna see those gentlemen. And if the penalties are something that continues, we can have that conversation. I think it's too early to be blowing the horn on this team, just completely being undisciplined and not learning from last year at all. Take a break. Take a breath. It's okay. And that's how I feel about it. I, that I'm of the majority, well, minority, I think, that says I want to see what my starters look like and not a lot of gentlemen playing their hearts out trying to make a roster who maybe are a little bit more reckless in the moment and maybe show some traits of urgency. One thing you need to know about me, I'm not a panicker. I'm not going to panic. So until it's time to hit the panic button, and it's not that time yet, not there, probably on left tackle. Let's talk about it. So Josh Ball um, obviously is a big topic of conversation right now because his showing in the preseason game um, and the Broncos practice, both of them combined, weren't spectacular. Now, again, I told you I watched this game over and over and over again. So eventually your eyes start seeing some bright spots. And <laughs> there were a couple of there were a couple of plays where I saw him get wide and sit in his hips and you know, he did his thing. He's it's all right. However, it's still not NFL quality yet. Like it's just it's not there. And um, whether they go out and address left tackle later, I'm at a place to where I'm like, what else, what more do you need to see from this man? Y'all are scaring me. Like y'all are scaring me because if you don't see this, come, somebody come look at this. Now, Isaac Alacone. Okay. Seen some improvement for him. For him, I'm so glad that he's getting the attention he deserves for his development and the work he's been putting in. Um, it sounds like they moved him from guard to tackle, and he looks pretty good. He didn't allow any pressures, and that's not easy to do on any level. So let's not discount it. I don't care if it was third stringers out there. I don't care. It's not easy to do on any level. Um, maybe they're looking to work him in. So that's something we're keeping an eye on this week in practice. But regardless, left tackle, swing tackle is still scaring me. It sounds like Tyron has a little bit of an ankle something. I When did this happen? Was it in the Denver practice? I, when does he be having time for these things to happen? Like, he was just fine. So we're keeping an eye on Tyron. If they're going to just go ahead and sit down Josh Ball and maybe give him another year because this technically is only his first year. He basically registered last year. And go get a tackle later in free agency. I mean, I guess late, late in free agency after preseason. Something. Somebody do something. I'm just tired of stressing about it. I feel like if they just went out and got a veteran swing tackle and Tyler Smith continued to look like the Tyler Smith I expected him to, then maybe I would feel a little bit better because at least I know I have a veteran, if Tyron goes down, that understands that left side, that can at least communicate with Tyler um, because that's something that we saw in this game. It's, 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 it's in time. It's, it's, he is a very raw player, and we talked about this early. Like I talked about this in his um, in my draft content after after he was drafted, 
This is a very raw player, so just that improvement he has made from being drafted to now, y'all, like, he mentally just gets it. He gets work ethic means you get better. He he gets listening and and his even his responses. This is an intelligent young man. Like and to see him to see him in this game really be snatching souls. Mind you, saw the two penalties. One of them was just like, come on. The other one he had his paws. He has his paws. And that outside shoulder like we talked about early um just some technique things that can be cleared up and you he's a coachable player so i expect him to do nothing less than to fix it and be better and getting to see what he is capable of doing at the second level y'all uh, we have a tp and a healthy ezekiel elliott in the backfield i if tyron can just be healthy for a little bit lordy some of those combo blocks, Lordy. Now, let's get into this defensive line. So Neville Gallimore played. It was kind of weird to me. I was like, why is he out there? But then I remembered that Neville Gallimore missed a lot of last season. Like he missed a good, I mean, he played what, six games? Maybe six games, five games? I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. I'm gonna put it on the screen, we'll see. Um, but yeah, he he didn't play a lot of football. So maybe he wanted to get in early. Maybe they wanted to get him early and, and get him acclimated. Could be, you know, because he got injured early in the preseason last year. So I thought maybe that has something to do with it. Um, but it was also just good to see him just go out there and dominate as he should have, as he should have going against second stringers. But him, Dante Fowler, Dante Flower, uh, Fowler, he flashed regardless like his speed off the line his confidence seems like it's it's back again and if you listen to Dante Fowler and you listen to his interviews you know what I'm saying like he he feels like this is where he can re-spark his career like a J-Ron curse and so um you can see that enthusiasm in his game um got a little chippy there gotta be better there Keep a cool head, Dante. But other than that, uh, definitely like what I saw from him as well, Chauncey Colston. Y'all, listen, whatever Chauncey Colston did to get that big, he needs to put it in a book and sell it. He needs to do something, like write a memoir, something. Because like sometimes I see him and without his number, I would not know who he is. I would not know who he is. They literally took Tyron Crawford, urbanized them, made them faster and bigger. And he, he is going to be a problem coming up the middle of offensive lines. Like I was so excited for what I seen, saw from him in run defense. The run defense, even on the second team, even on the second team, looks like it's not nothing to be played with. And we got DBs who are not afraid to come up and tackle. This is going to make things a lot easier for our linebackers to do what they want to do. And that brings me to Anthony Barr probably, possibly, hopefully, sounds like making his first appearance this week in practice. I know that they are slow playing him, as they should, as they should. But I just am so, ex I'm excited to see him just on the field with Micah and and Jabril and hopefully seeing just them communicating and maybe getting a few looks at what Dan Quinn has in mind with them. So keeping an eye on that. The young tight ends, um, Jake Ferguson, Peyton Hendershot. I like what I saw from those two gentlemen, especially um, because in this, in this NFL's mm, tight end world, I guess you wanna say, you're starting to see a trend of the athletic kind of receiver like tight end that's a little rangy but can high point the ball and and make a play and make a move and keep going that's why you have the travis kelsey's of the world that's why you have the the kyle pitts of the world it's kind of some of the things that the cowboys i think wanted to do with blake jarwin so i think that's 
obviously what they were looking to bring onto this team since the absence of Jarwin is a thing. And so also too in a preseason, especially you're just looking for players to be where they're supposed to be, make the most out of the plays that they are given. And their numbers were called obviously a few times. They made the best out of those, those um, opportunities, showed off some of those abilities, making little cuts and stuff. I was like, okay, okay, youngins. So I am optimistic about the gentlemen in the tight end room down the depth chart and what they can develop to be. Both of them aren't astronomically great as blockers, but one thing I'm learning about the tight end position is that it's a very progressive position and it is a position that you have to be patient with development wise because they it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. They do dirty work and stuff that other positions don't have to do as frequently, especially since they're a lot of the time in the thick of things. So let's give these guys some time to develop, get a little weight on them, um, understand the field a little bit more. I think they may be used situationally with different stuff. Wouldn't be surprised. They had a couple splash plays for these gentlemen, but I think Dalton Schultz is about to have a hell of a year. It was also just nice to see Jeremy Sprinkle on the field. We can say what we want to say about him. However, he is going to be needed as a blocker this year. So to see him on the field coming back from an Achilles anything is promising. Okay, lastly, I am really, really hoping that Will Greer is good to go. Um, I know he was dealing with a groin last week. Cowboys have some of the best trainers in the game. Really hoping he is ready to go because that two spot is his if he's healthy. All we need you to do is get up and play because there it can't be that much easier to be, well, it can't be that much harder to be better than what we saw from Cooper Rush and respect to him. Respect to him for helping us win that Minnesota game last year all that good stuff that's not right now and right now we have young receivers dennis houston jalen tolbert turpin drummond like we got vasher we got some young guys that we need to see in a nfl speed game and cooper rush is not going to give he's not gonna give those guys that shot he does not have the arm strength. He does not have the just the, the mental wherewithal. He also doesn't have the and and when I say that when I say that I mean just going through his reads, the processing is what I mean. It doesn't help that the offensive line is definitely not gonna be starter. It's not gonna be starter caliber. So he's going to have to make some things shake. He doesn't have the athleticism that Will Greer has to extend plays and to get outside the pocket. I am really hoping that he is good to go so we can better evaluate these wide receivers and kind of see what we have moving forward um so that's number one and kicker listen it ain't it ain't really no competition at this point it ain't really no competition ain't nobody kicking nothing and then every time they kick something there's there's reasons why it was so bad like that was a long kick i mean what do you expect the man to do like, of course he's going to miss it. It was a super long kick. But they're mano y mano to me until I see something in a game setting or somebody makes something in practice consistently. I don't care. That's all I got. Follow me on Twitter, Aisha Morrison with two eyes, and I will be on here talking to y'all about the Chargers practice soon. Bye.